Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is not joining us for this one. All right, we're getting right into this. So I'm putting on the adapter for the Ken Onion Work Sharp Sharpener. You just click that button and you can rotate it whichever way you want and pull it on and off. It's really easy to get on and off. You just hit that little button where my thumb was hitting. Now, that little gear right there gives you tension to put on and take off the belt. Uh, you know, it gives it tension also so that it spins with tension. And we're going to start off by sharpening a conventional way. I'm going to show that first. There's the guide right there. It just slips right on. And then you can adjust your angles right there. I got mine at 20 degrees. Now, the way you want to do this, you want to push the button as you, or when you put the knife in, you put the knife in and hit the button. You want to put the knife in first, hit the button, and then stop it before you pull the tip all the way out so it doesn't round it. So you see here, I got the tip, it's almost out, and then I stop it. I do see, you know, okay results with just pulling the knife up but this is the way that they show how to do it so you want to basically hit the button every time honestly you know many times i just leave it going and you know i just run it right through and i just lift up at the tip now here's the second belt and you just basically do the exact same thing and you go all the way through the belt it's really easy to use there's lots of videos on it and i already do have a video on it but here's an unconventional way you can just set it up where you can just hold the knife at an angle and run it across the belt. Now, if you look at my hands, I'm actually using my hands as a guide. So I'm taking my four fingers underneath the knife and keeping them the same. They're basically rubbing across a flat surface, which is the table. See my hands right there? I'm kind of holding them. I'm holding them right here just like this and I'm putting them in the exact same spot every time I'm using my fingers to run across the table that way I'm kind of holding it the best I can the same way every single time so even if I flip it I just hold it in the same way and it works really good I've had really really good results this way I do recommend doing one side at a time before you flip but, or you can flip back and forth. I mean, it's clearly up to you, but I recommend just doing one side at a time. Now I'm, now I'm gonna show another unconventional way. We're gonna flip this forward and flip it all the way over on its back. Now you're gonna want something to kind of prop it up on to stop it from, you know, to, to make sure it's nice and flat and that it's not gonna rock or anything like that. You see, I got some little rubber feet I'm using. And then my table is nice and flat. See what I'm doing with my knife there? I'm using the knife as the level surface. It's the same kind of way you use the, the belt grinder, which we're gonna show here in a second. But I found really good results this way. Now you can't change the angle on the belt, so you're gonna have to just deal with whatever angle the belt is. But it seems to work really, really good this way. And then this way you can kind of get by without getting the belt grinder. If you don't have the money for it, I do highly recommend the belt grinder, but sometimes, you know, you just gotta get by with what you have, and if you have this system, you can do it just like this. You just wanna make sure your table that you're putting the blade on, let the handle hang off, and just put the blade on it, make sure it is level. It needs to be leveled, it's very important. And then, same thing, just like with the way we're gonna do the belt grinder here in a second. Now, here's the belt grinder. Now we're putting the belt grinder on and the screw that you put on, you want to make sure the grooves line up, you know, for it to go in and rotate on, you know, make sure the teeth line up. But then this little knob I'm putting on, you, that spins the opposite direction. So whatever direction, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey, it's lefty tighty, righty loosey. And then this little plunge right here, that's gonna hold the tension. You see how I can push it in and I can turn it, it'll lock itself in place. Then I can put the belt on and then I can rotate it back and it'll put pressure on the belt and stop it from being loose. You know, basically just keeping the tension on it that like it's supposed to have. You see it click right in right there. I actually hit the trigger to, to fully lock it in because it was like held up or something. But now that's an S35 BN blade steel kitchen knife right here. And now with this, I always do, this is the way I do it. I always do one side completely at a time. 
I do not flip until my first side is 100% done. So you see the flat plate that, I'm, that I lay it on before I lift up? That gives me a perfectly flat angle. And I lock my wrist. I slowly pick it up to the belt because I want to make sure that I'm holding that flat angle all the way up to the belt. And then I don't put a lot of pressure. I put just enough pressure to, to stop it from really bending the belt and stop the belt from pushing back. So not a lot of pressure and I try to run it as controlled as possible. I take my time turning. Now a lot of people, or I don't know about a lot of people, but some people they just lock their arms and turn their hips. That works too, you know, because you can just hold your arms in one spot and just rotate your hips. I tend to use my elbows, so I lock my wrist. I use my opposite hand that's not on the handle to control. And then I, I work my elbows and I turn my elbows. So that's just what works for me. But I make sure I have a burr all the way down the edge before I flip. And I watch my grip pattern. It's very, 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 very important. Watch the grip pattern. Follow that burr. What is a burr? A burr is, it ends up on the opposite side you're sharpening. Whatever side you're sharpening, the blade, the steel, as you're sharpening, will roll over to the opposite side. And you'll feel a wire if you rub the opposite way to the edge you know you just rub up the edge and you will feel a wire you want to make sure that goes from heel to tip no blank spots and if i feel any blank spots where i feel a burr here and then it's smooth in other places and then i feel the burr through the middle i keep going i keep going till the burr covers the entire thing to make sure that uh, and i also look at my grip pattern and make sure it's all the way up the edge that's how i get the best results from this system. Okay, let's talk about what a grip pattern is. A grip pattern is the lines you see on the edge bevel. That is the grit on the edge. That is how you sharpen your knife is by putting grit on the edge and removing steel. With every belt or stone you go on to, you want it to cover the last grit. And you want to make sure the grit covers from the top of the edge bevel all the way down to the very apex of the edge. And that's how you create a burr. Now you see this last one is polished, the grit is gone. So this would be like a, f a final stone or a final belt, you know, depending on how you're sharpening. If you're wanting a polished edge, you might not, you might want a low grit. So I know a lot of people do a couple swipes and flip, do a couple swipes and flip. Some people just do one swipe, flip, one swipe, flip. And I've done it like that before too. But this way gets me the best results. Now. You never want to watch how fast somebody else did something and base it on how long it's going to take you. That's never, ever the case. And you can make huge mistake doing that because then you start thinking in your head, oh, it took him 10 minutes. It shouldn't be taking me longer than 15. And then you're rushing because you're thinking you're doing something wrong and you get aggravated. Don't do that to yourself. Every steel is different. Every blade is different. The thicknesses are different. The, the damage is different. Your pressure is different. There's so many differences that you never want to, you know, um, put, you know, make it seem like it's going to be the same. Just follow the grit and follow the burr. That's the most important. If you follow that, you can watch your results happening and you can see when your results are going to come. So I switched the, the belt, obviously. And so now I'm going up the grit. And, you know, this is a rinse and repeat thing. You know, you just... Get, well, also, let me say this. The first belt, by doing what I said, by finishing one side, then flipping to the other side, the other belts will work faster. The second belt, basically, the heavier the grit, the next belt, you're going to spend a little less time, but more time than the next one. Because... The, the grit scratches are thicker and deeper with the, the lower course, the coarser grits, you know. So your first belt is you're probably going to take the most time in, you know, getting all the, the nicks and dings and everything out and realigning and getting your angle and yada, yada, yada. Then your next belt, you're basically taking that scratch pattern out and replacing it with a finer scratch pattern. Make sure you get a burr. 
You want a burr with every single belt, all the way up to the strop. You want a burr, not with the strop, but you know, all the, all the belts up into the strop. So now I'm going to the next belt and you know, like this one should go a little bit faster than the next one. And if it doesn't, you might have made a mistake. Maybe you do need to spend a little bit more time. I'm not. I'm not telling you to to rush or think anything like that. You just you do it till it's done. You know, you you, you do it until the grip pattern is covered. You do it until the burr is all the way up and down the blade. But take your time. Be patient. Stay controlled. Stay focused. Concentrate on keeping the blade nice and flat. And don't rush it. Don't rush it. You know. It's, uh, you know, like I said before, it's a fast system anyway, so, but that doesn't mean that it's, you know, that you're not going to have to put time in. Some knives, yes, yeah, some knives you're going to be able to get through a lot faster. Some, you might be able to do an entire, you know, kitchen drawer full of knives in 10 minutes, and then another knife you could spend 10 minutes alone on. So it all just depends. But yeah, stay nice and controlled and take your time. Make sure your edge looks good. Keep looking at your edge too. Keep looking at it, touching it, feeling it. Make sure it's, you know, it's, um, you're getting a burr all the way up and down. The grip pattern's covering it. So now I'm going to this next belt. Now this next belt you know, is where it's starting to get really fine now. So now I'm going, I, I'm most likely gonna go a little bit slower maybe. Um, I'm trying to make sure that the grit is going to be nice and fine going across the edge. Now you do not have to go as fine as I'm gonna go with this edge. This is S35VN. Normally, like on a pocket knife, I would want this to be a toothy edge. I like S35VN with a toothy edge, but this is a kitchen knife. So I had already freehand sharpened it and it was a razor blade. But I don't know how good that was for a kitchen. Um, I, I think a, a convex edge would be a little bit more proper for a kitchen knife because of the chopping and the bones and the stuff like that. So. I think a convex edge would be better, and that's why I decided to put it on this work sharp um, sharpener because it, it, that's what it does. It gives you a convex edge because of the belt. So I think we're going to switch to the strop here. Yep, here's the strops, and then there's compounds in there too. There's two strops. There's the red compound and the green compound. So we're going to start with the green and end with the red. And the strop, you know, it's it's a lot like a leather strop. It's just on a belt with compound. And it works really good. I mean, it definitely refines and, you know, I don't know about polish. I mean, I guess, yeah, it polishes the edge. If you go through your grit cycle really good, it definitely polishes the edge. But if you skip around and if you don't take your time and if you don't get the grip patterns to cover the, the last grip pattern, it will not come out polished. And then you see how sharp this thing is. It's very, very sharp. It took a ridiculously sharp edge. And here in a second, I'm going to show you the difference between a dull knife and this knife when it comes to cutting something else. I'll show you here in just a second. Yeah, this is very, very sharp. We'll also take a, a, a quick look at the edge. All right, now this is a dull knife. Look at it on this foam. This is all this is is foam. I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. It should have no problem cutting through this at all. There's not even a cut at all. Dull knife. Now watch this one, the one I just sharpened. I'm holding it with two fingers. That's it. Two fingers. Look how sharp that is. Very, very sharp. Two fingers, that's it. Right through it like butter like warm butter 
Okay, here it is under 40 times magnification. Now you can see the grip pattern. Now without the magnifying, it, it's a polished edge, but when you're zoomed in this close, you're gonna see a grip pattern. And it looks very similar to a factory edge because it is a belt ground edge, you know, like factory edges are on pocket knives or on any knife, so most knives. And then here it is, you can see to the naked eye, it is basically a polished edge. And I'm very happy with the results. The system works fantastic on kitchen knives. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.